China has a lot of problems with its tax system, which means the way it collects money from people and businesses. Even though China is a big and important country with lots of money and trade, it still has a hard time making sure everyone pays their taxes. This causes a bunch of issues that need to be fixed. One of the biggest problems is that China needs a lot of money to pay for things like schools, hospitals, and roads, because it has a big economy. To get all that money, China needs to collect taxes from a lot of different sources. But compared to the United States, another big country, China doesn't collect as much tax money. In the US, they get around 17% of their total money as taxes, and when you count the money from local governments, it's even more. But in China, they only get about 9% of their total money as taxes. China's tax collection problem can be broken down into three key issues. Firstly, they struggle to collect taxes from the majority of the population. Secondly, those they can collect taxes from often find ways to avoid paying them. And finally, the taxes that are collected don't always go to the intended destinations. With a population of 1.4 billion people spread across diverse regions, it becomes challenging for a central authority or institution to oversee all operations effectively. As a result, China's government authority is shared among provinces, sub-provincial regions, and cities, each responsible for specific functions relevant to their respective areas. This decentralized system is not uncommon and mirrors the structures found in many other governments worldwide. However, the funding mechanisms differ significantly. In most developed economies, local governments receive their funding primarily through property taxes and financial allocations from higher levels of government. These higher-level governments provide financial support to the states, who in turn allocate funds to local governments. Alternative revenue sources such as parking tickets or business fees may also contribute but are relatively minor compared to the primary funding channels. China's local governments have a distinct approach. They generate most of their revenue by taxing businesses and leasing land holdings for periods ranging from 20 to 70 years. In China, private ownership of urban land is prohibited, so leasing it for extended periods becomes a significant source of income. While 60% of business-related revenue must be returned to the central government, local governments retain the revenue generated from land leasing. Considering the vast size of China's real estate market, this revenue source becomes highly significant. In China, the money the government gets from leasing land depends on how valuable that land is for development. But land only becomes valuable if there is infrastructure like roads and buildings nearby. This creates competition among different provincial governments to build more infrastructure, sell land rights, and make money for further development. The cycle has two important results. First, it leads to too much infrastructure being built, which can be seen in ghost cities and underused railways. These unused developments are quite common in China and have been talked about before. Second, it requires provincial governments to invest a lot of money up front. However, these governments are not allowed to borrow money by issuing bonds, and they only get money from selling land rights. To solve this problem, they've come up with a solution called a local government financing platform, which is a bit questionable. Under this arrangement, the local government creates a private company and gives it some of its assets like cash, shares in state-owned businesses, or land rights. The company, now considered private, can use these assets as collateral to get a loan from the bank. The local government can then use the borrowed money to pay for infrastructure projects, and the banks can sell the loans as bonds on the market. In 2019, these bonds accounted for 39% of all the bonds in China's domestic market. Before that, most bonds were issued by real estate companies that wanted money to develop land leased from local governments. These local government financing platform bonds are generally seen as safe investments because the Communist Party indirectly supports them. Chinese investors find it hard to believe that the government would not pay back its debts. Also, this system moves government debt to the private sector, making the national debt look better than it really is. But it's important to know that these debts belong to local governments, not the national government. And there is a risk of bankruptcy because local governments have limited ways to raise money. So far, this system has not caused big problems because the value of the real estate has been going up, and the profits from land leasing have covered this risky borrowing. But this fragile balance is starting to fall apart, and people are worried about whether it can continue in the long run. China's strict measures to control the spread of COVID-19, including lockdowns, have had a big impact on the economy. The government's policy of aiming for zero COVID-19 cases has led to complete lockdowns in cities like Shanghai whenever even a single case is found. These restrictions have hurt businesses because people are only allowed to leave their homes to buy groceries. As a result, the real estate industry has suffered a lot, and 
and local Chinese governments have lost a major source of income. Furthermore, people's confidence in the real estate market has started to decline because of some well-known property development companies going bankrupt. This has made fewer people interested in buying properties, which has caused a decrease in construction. This, in turn, means the local governments are earning less money from renting out their land. Additionally, banks are becoming less willing to accept land as collateral for bonds issued by local government financing platforms. Adding to the challenges, the Chinese government has been issuing tax refunds to citizens during lockdowns while simultaneously pushing for infrastructure projects. This has resulted in reduced income, increased spending, and limited options for filling the financial gap. Investors are concerned about the Chinese bond market, which is tied to real estate and considered safe but may pose risks. The market's reliance on continuous growth is worrisome. Despite high ratings like AA or AAA indicating safety, the actual situation may differ. The Chinese bond market is huge, worth $19 trillion, which is more than the global mortgage-backed securities market worth $11 trillion. Some argue that the regulation of the latter market was better. The size of China's bond market is much bigger than its entire economy, which raises concerns about its stability. It's unclear if the central government would be able to help local governments if the bond market were to collapse catastrophically due to its enormous size. One of the main issues in China is the expiration of land leases, causing a dilemma for the government. The traditional agreement was to return the land, but this is unpopular among those who would lose their homes and investments. Many believe the government will not reclaim expired land due to political reasons, supported by the real estate market pricing homes with shorter leases the same as longer ones. People expect leases to be extended indefinitely, especially since building quality may not last the full lease period. Confusion arises from unclear laws on land rentals, leaving it uncertain if fees will be involved. This ambiguity was deliberate to avoid responsibility for resolving the issue. Extending land rentals without fees would result in revenue loss. Additionally, China faces a problem with tax evasion, as many individuals work in the informal economy and use cash or platforms like WeChat for transactions. Wealthy individuals structure their income to minimize tax payments. The majority of the population avoids paying taxes, which puts a burden on the minority who do pay their fair share. Loose regulations around business taxes encourage economic activity, which has been a key driver of China's economic growth. Additionally, allowing tax evasion gives the government leverage to investigate and arrest individuals when necessary. However, this approach presents several challenges. Relying on taxes from a small portion of the population creates an unfair burden, reduces regular tax revenue, and limits the government's control over the economy. Fiscal policy, including tax adjustments and government spending, play a crucial role in effectively managing an economy. By effectively taxing only a small portion of the population, the Chinese government lacks substantial control over the economy, especially during economic downturns or when managing inflation. Without a broad tax base, the government's ability to steer the economy becomes limited like trying to steer a jumbo jet with a handheld fan. While monetary policy receives a lot of attention, fiscal policy is equally, if not more, important for effective economic management. Let's assess China, the second largest economy in the world, and rank it on the Economics Explained National Leaderboard. First, we consider its size. With a GDP of 17.7 .7 trillion, it undeniably earns a perfect score of 10 out of 10. However, when we take into account its population, the GDP per capita is $12,556, which places it as a middle-income country globally. When it comes to stability and confidence, it gets a bit complicated. While China's economy is influential and unlikely to vanish, there are concerns about government interventions that can eliminate businesses and individuals arbitrarily, among other risks. Taking these uncertainties into account, China receives a score of 6 out of 10. China's growth has been remarkable, with its economy more than doubling in size since 2010 and growing over 10 times compared to 2000. This outstanding growth earns a perfect score of 10 out of 10. Regarding industry, China has transformed from being a hub of low-cost manufacturing to a dominant industrial powerhouse. It possesses an advanced financial system, a thriving domestic market, and renowned local companies. Although it may not excel in certain high-end sectors, it still deserves a top score of 10 out of 10. With that said, thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. And if you found this content helpful, give the video a like. See you in the next video. Till then, take care.